to Arena in London, where Tyson Fury will be defending his European WBO uh, international heavyweight titles against the number four ranked Christian Hammer from Hamburg in Germany. He's currently ranked number th sorry number three by the WBO. Um, as, we, as I've said before, the previous com press conference the other week, this is a, I think it's a, a risk fight for Tyson. He's not um, asked for an easy job whilst waiting for the shot at, um, at Klitschko. And um, I don't think he can do no more than find a, a guy who's ranked number three in the world for him to step into the ring with. Christian's got a great reputation uh, and he does come to fight. He's a big puncher, so it's going to be quite an, quite an interesting night, I think, as far as uh, any way is concerned. Um, if, uh, and hopefully, Tyson comes through this, obviously we'll be pressing for the um, fight against Klitschko. We did have talks with them, um, Nick Hennessy, uh, Tyson's promoter, and I had talks with them uh, about two, two or three weeks ago, we thought we were quite close actually to making the fight, but unfortunately um, we couldn't do that because of the, the uh, situation regarding money and, and what their expectation was. So um, we've got to we'll get this fight out of the way and then hopefully uh, we can get the fight on the pitch. But there's also an, obviously another interesting development the fight that took place the weekend. Um, I don't know if anybody got to see it, I'm sure somebody did the uh, Stubborn. Um, Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce one. Uh, <laughs> I don't, that's a good way to cause a bit of trouble. Beyonce one. Uh, uh, regarding that fight, it was, uh, I thought it was a fan. I thought actually thought it was a really good heavyweight fight and refreshing to watch. And I thought personally that um, Wild came out of it really well. Uh, he's no doubt about it. He's got an excellent jab. He jabbed his well way through that fight. His tactics were spot on, and he came away with the title. And so. It's another facet now to the heavyweight division. And obviously, he mentioned, he mentioned Tyson, um, that he would like, like to fight him this year. I don't think there'd be any, uh, any problems with us. They're certainly pushing an open door there as far as that fight's concerned. So there's, say, a lot of options at the moment. And um, Tyson's just got to keep winning. But this guy here on my left is uh, obviously going to do his best to ensure that he, he, he throws a spanner in the works. But as I say, I, I, I think Tyson, has, has got all the credentials to go all the way. He certainly improved it last year in the fight against Derek Chisora. He beat Derek, he beat a fighter who was on form, who had, a lot of, had five wins under his belt against good class opposition, and he, he dealt with him and beat him uh, very convincingly. And I say that as Derek's manager, he's done, he done a great job. Anyway, the guys are here. We've got um, also a partner, um, Bill Ives is here. We want to thank Raymond Still who will be sponsoring the event and also uh, TalkSport who will be uh, broadcasting the event on our radio and as you know it will be live and exclusive on Box Nation, Sky 437 and the HD Channel 490 on Virgin 546 and TalkTalk Talk 525. Anyway, I know you've got millions of questions to ask us so please go ahead and do so. Nice. Makes a nice change for the heavyweight champions for you up. It does, it does. It's uh, very refreshing to hear the new heavyweight champion want to fight me. Um, you know, it shows the type of colour of a fighter I am. Um, when the first thing out of the mouth is they want to fight me, so there we have it. Tyson, um, what do you know about your opponent? Have you seen any videos of him? Or? I, uh, I'm no Christian since about 2006. Uh, we both went to the World Junior Championships in Morocco which he won, I got a bronze medal, um, he got the gold medal there and then I, w I met him again in Poland in European Union Championships and then again in Russia in the European Championships so I'm very familiar with him as an amateur, he was a great, uh, he was a good amateur boxer um, since then he's turned pro, he's, uh, he's been over in Germany, Hamburg boxing, he's had some good wins recently, Kevin Johnson, Brafra Costa Jr, who was undefeated um, he's had some great fights and he's a combination puncher, he's got good footwork and he, uh, he punches hard as well, so interesting fight. Yeah. You've never actually sparred him, have you? Oh no, never. Yeah, definitely, it's my most uh, accomplished opponent so far, I would say, as in from his pedigree of his amateur background and, and the way he's uh, come through the professional ranks. And he's had a couple of uh, hiccups along the way, but you know, he's recovered from them and he's on, he's on a winning streak, I think he's 
10 in a row or something like that, won his last 10 or whatever. Undefeated since 2010, so it's coming for five years. To be honest, I had Christmas and New Year off, <clears throat> and I don't like to uh, ponder on the past. What's ever happened behind me, I'm not interested really. I was looking forward to the future, so I come into camp, had a great Christmas and New Year, enjoyed myself to the maximum, and uh, I'm really prepared for a 2015, be a, a great big year for me, and hopefully I'll get that world title shot. I didn't see the fight, I'm not going to lie, but I did see some clips of the fight. Um, I believe Deontay Wilder done a very good job. And, um, He's lighting up the division at the moment, isn't he? It's on everybody's mouth. If, I know this is very hypothetical, but if you were faced with the immovable task of saying a world title fight with Klitschko or a world title fight with Wilder, who would you choose and why? Good question. I would choose. I would choose Klitschko because he's number one in the division and he holds most of the belts. And then I would defend it against Deontay Wilder. To unify the division. That's my uh, ideal plan to provide and get past this guy to my left. That's not me, that's you. <laughs> Can we ask Christian Thomas, did he, uh, has he seen a lot of uh, Tyson's fights uh, in on, obviously, on television? And if so, what's he think of him and how's he going to beat him? Hopefully, you know, you can't take anyone for granted. Um, the guy's a good boxer, but you know, many people have made the same mistake as this bill is labelled risky business. There was not so long ago a fighter called Dennis Boitsoff, who was also mandatory for the world title and risked it against Alex Leopai and lost his mandatory position. Therefore, Alex Leopai went on and fought Klitschko instead of him. So, very risky. I must focus on this fight and take it very, very seriously. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not interested in Klitschko, Wilders, anybody else. I'm only interested in this guy here. Is it temptation to just wait? No, because I've been inactive for long enough. Um, I, I do want to keep busy. Um, it's on my time. I'm not, I'm not going to wait on Klitschko's time or anybody else's time. This is my career and I, I want to keep going and, and keep improving, you know. Having long periods of time off doesn't help any fight, I don't care what they say. Inactivity is the worst of thing for a boxer. And, you know, whether it be Klitschko, hopefully it's Klitschko, or uh, <coughs> Wilder, whatever it may be, maybe the game is, as you know, Tyson saying, being busy, going into that fight, but you're best prepared, rather than sitting down. You could sit here now and wait until Klitschko fights take place, which would be, you know, end of June, maybe July, maybe September. And that, how, how good is that going to be for him? Just be sitting around not doing it. That's why I think you've got to take, take your hat to him with the opponent that he's taking. And it is, you know, this show is called Risky Business, and it is a big risk for him. No doubt about it. Focus on Hammer, because that's, you know, he's here on a mission as well. He's number three rated. He wins this fight, he becomes the manager challenger. So it's, uh, you know, he's got everything to go for, and he's got everything to lose. I mentioned you thought you were close at getting an agreement with Klitschko. How far away were you in terms of their plan for the Well, Mick and I had conversations with them and it just broke down as a result of money. So you know, they're, the they're, they're, you know, what they want, like always, you deal with the Klitschkos, um, you get a crumb off the table. But the difference is, Tyson's in a mandatory position, so it's a different game. Um, when we, not just myself, other people who negotiate, Fights them for voluntary defences in his title. Um, 
and, the bro and his other and his brother, it's always been very, very difficult. They don't want to pay anything. They don't want to leave you, if, you know, anything whatsoever. They're, 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 they've got a great image as far as boxing is concerned. But I'll tell you what, if some of the deals that they put to you for their, you know, for their opponents, I did it, or Don King did it, we'd be in trouble. We'd be called all sorts of things. That's how difficult it is, and I think Mick could back me up on that. It's, uh, it's not easy. So any negotiations now would be in terms of mandatory? Well, mandatory, then you're talking, you know, you're, you're talking from, at least you've got some strength in the negotiation because that's what it is. In the worst case scenario, you go to per first bits. Um, hopefully we can get this on. There is a will, certainly from uh, this side of the table, to get it, make it happen because it's the fight. It's what this was all about. You know, that's what the, that was what Tyson and Derek Chisora fight was all about. You know, the winner of that fight getting into the position to be able to take advantage of being in the number one spot and actually get an opponent in with Klitschko who would give them a fight rather than, you know, handpicking the guys that they do. That's all they do. They handpick them. Easy jobs, easy jobs. This is, you know, th this is now, I think the heavyweight division is live another bit this year. You know, with Deontay Wilder winning, with Tyson being in the mandatory slot, you're going to see some sensible and good fights happen. Well, the yeah, heavyweight division has a chance now to come alive. And what we don't want is the Klitschko's ducking out and making, you know, continue making these easy defences that they do. I don't think, that's why the heavy, heavyweight division is dead on its backside in America. And that's why a lot of people don't pay a lot of attention to it. It's now, it's spiced up a bit. And it's getting back to how it should be. Frank, those negotiations have been successful. The fight has been here or in Germany? We were looking to do it here. Uh, we were looking to do it at the Millennium Stadium. That's what we were looking to do uh, for this time of year. Obviously, a roof on the on, on, on a, over people's heads, but um, it wasn't. Although we're delivering what we said we did, which is uh, fight for it. <coughs> uh, question for Peter Fury and Mick Hennessy, Tyson's team. Were there any other opponents in the mix for this? Anyone domestically? This seemed like the best, best ranked opponent. I mean, he was the highest ranked opponent, and um, and you know, as Frank said, you know, Tyson's looking, always looking for not only you know the right fight, but a, a right fight that's going to get him in a position to fight for the world title. And he's highly ranked, and he's a he's a top contender. He's a dangerous fight, so Tyson's never looking for easy fights, you know. So he, he was the right one. Peter, taking you back in training. Yeah, we're back in full training now. He's uh, been in camp for two weeks, and um, yeah, everything's going well. We're all, uh, he's ready. Wait, are you local? Are you in your camp? Is it local? You yeah, know? we're in the UK. We're back here. Chris, what still the view of Tyson from Germany? What is the view of Tyson from Germany? Black or white, doesn't matter what happens. But the thing is going to be 
become a good pilot. Same age as me, yeah, that's true, 26, 27. Question for Bill Ives, who was on the phone, Bill? Sorry? Who was on the phone? Oh, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was click. Assuming, uh, having a go ahead with April, and you're looking at a longer time scale of fighting, uh, it was the man, if you want to hire her off with your first, will you take it? Providing I get through Christian, then yeah. I'll take the fight for sure. So if he said you next in May, I can take Frank, Deontay Wilder's people said they're more than willing to come to the UK to put on the fight uh, against Tyson Fury. That must be good and bode well for you for yourselves. Well, it's, it is, I mean, and uh, that could be done. That's <coughs> you know, as I say, said earlier, you know, everyone's pushing against an open door here. All this guy wants to do is to fight for a world title, whether it be Klitschko, whether it be Wilder. Um, he obviously said his preference is Klitschko, and I can understand that because he's the best. But um, I'm certain we wouldn't turn that one down. So there, there will be, there are some talks, and there will be some talks going on to see what can be done about it. Um, Don King said before the fight, Stavern had won. He would have come over here in a heartbeat, but that didn't happen. So. Uh, you know, the most exciting fight out there, without a doubt, is Tyson against Wilder. I think it's a much, much more exciting fight than Klitschko, even though Klitschko is the, you know, is the linear champion. That is a, you know, two undefeated heavyweights in, in there, uh, similar styles, same height, uh, both got fabulous jabs, you know, both uh, got a winning mentality, so uh, there's no doubt about it, that'd be a great fight. But, but this fella here who can, upset the apple cart. And, you know, I think Tyson's quite right in what he says. That's all he needs to focus on. But as a promoter, obviously, you're looking to put on a big event. And I think that the Wilder fight would be huge. I think it'd be massive. I actually think it'd be the biggest fight in the last 10 years in British boxing. And I mean that. I think, it'd be, you know, people love heavyweights. You know, it's just a massive fight. It's, it'd fill up any football ground in the country. Any of them. Get excited about yeah, as I said, I think it's you know it's been in the doldrums for the reasons I mentioned earlier, and we're in a situation now where it's uh, you know it, it, it is you know, it's, it, there's some there's some great fights to be made there, and they're fights that the fans would like to see. It's, uh, you know, I, I think two, 2015 is going to be a, is the renaissance of the heavyweight division. That's where we are, that's what we're gonna see, some good fights. And nobody, but nobody should be ducking out. They should be ashamed of themselves if they do. You know, the, Brit the British public, you know, the, the boxing public around the world want to see the heavyweights, the best heavyweights fight each other. None of this ducking out. Make the fights that matter. Let Give the fans what they want. And give the fighters what they want. You know, that's except Twitch going on. He doesn't want it. Give the fighters what they want. I think Deontay Wilder is a fight man, and he's, as he said you know, on in, in interviews out in, in Vegas, he would fight Tyson this year. So let's hope he's uh, somebody who is not just giving lip service, he means what he says. I believe he does. So let's hope we can get it on. Presumably that's a stadium fight as well. Yeah, I, I think, no, I'm saying that's what I think is the bigger fight. I think Deontay, uh, Deontay, keep calling him. Deontay. <laughs> You can call me that, I'll press call tonight, I'll, I'll, I'll go. Um, the other thing was Wilder and Tyson, in my opinion, I think is a huge fight. So it's the biggest fight out there, bar none. Bar none. Other than, I think it's the next biggest fight as far as we talk about generating income, generating uh, interest, live gate, other than Pacquiao of Mayweather. And I mean that, that's not just hype talk. You can't think of another fight that would sell out, you know, a Wembley or a Millennium. It's that fight. That's the sort of fans we have in the UK. They can turn out for the big fights. It is a big fight. And as I say, I can't think of a, I can't really think of another big, bigger fight than that. And I think the Klitschko fight's a huge fight. But I think Wilder, the new kid on the block, 
now is uh, our knowledge is fabulous. Right, you um, I made I had a conversation last night, but it's all sort of early, early days. Well, they said they wanted it. You know, they're the ones who called it out. They're the ones who said they wanted it. And I say, I've got to be honest with you. If, if they, if we made that fight today, I'd pay, pay, pay them off. And I mean, with the greatest respect. And I would talk them all out of it. Go straight to it. <laughs> Absolutely, would do that in a heartbeat. You know, we'd, we'd pay, we'd pay him, give him a fight and a half. I would go straight to that. Or well, my advice would be to go to that fight. Why take the risk? <coughs> I doubt. <coughs> but you never know. There were positive conversations about us. Absolutely. Yeah. Tyson, question to the maybe one point. Do you believe you're asking that or? You know, I don't believe there's a man in this room who thinks he can beat me in whatever. Um, the bookies certainly don't believe it, and I certainly don't believe it. He's got about as much chance of beating me on points as me beating you saying Bolt in 100 metre sprint. <laughs> Not very much. But I'd still give it a go, and that's what he's here to do. He's going to give it a go. And you know, racing ain't, ain't boxing. Heavyweight boxing only takes one punch on the chin, temple, anywhere really. And it's all over. That's why it's so great of a sport. The underdog can always win. Now, me racing Usain Bolt, I'm the underdog, but I'd never win. So that's why boxing is so special. Anything can happen at any time. One punch turns a fight. What did you tell Christian what Tyson said? Yes. What did he say? And he also he agrees everything can happen in the heavyweight. He shouldn't believe that he can beat Christian because of Christian will defeat Tyson and that there is no kid. He is still a child in the head, in the mind. And he will convince him that he can defeat him on the planet. It's going to be the judgment day. Will you be bringing much support on the computer? There will come a lot of people to support. And yes. Yeah. And what? What? How, how many do you reckon be coming out of the Germany? To come. How so many people to come to support him? Yeah, to support him. We will see. Hundreds, I think. But that's not his. But it, it, it hasn't to do something with the support. He's going to, to win this fight and he, he will, will win the fight. And we are alone in the ring. And that's the only thing that matters. Make the best I'll have a bit of interpretation there. I mean, obviously, because of British boxing board and control, I'm sure we'd have a real lively press conference, but it has to be toned down. So I'm sure he's, I see he's chomping up a bit. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Tyson, does Christian Howard fall under the title of Big Lummox with his size? Nope. He's got fast feet, 6'2, decent boxer. He's not a big lummox. Okay. <laughs> Have we got any more questions? Just one more. That's so uh, they Chris goes from the Hamburg and so is Christian to them, but does he know Chris goes to see a lot of him? Does he have a spar with him? If he has spar, he's Chris. Well, they both come from Hamburg, don't they? Chris, Flavia yeah. and Christian. I just wonder whether 
they see each other quite often or they spar together. They, they don't see each other, but he sparred with Klitschko in last September when Klitschko prepared for the Pulev fight. Vladimir uh, Klitschko. Oh, uh, the next question is, does he think he's got more chance of beating Klitschko than Tyson? The first priority is to concentrate on the Tyson Fury fight, then he thinks about the next step. Right, uh, are there more questions on heavyweights? We also have on the card Liam Walsh is fighting the return match with Joe Murray, a good little fight. Um, Frank Bulliani is fighting Ivan Duke from Croatia. Um, as mentioned before, Arnold Patterson against Glenn Foot would be allowed in <coughs> Bradley Skeet and Louis Petit's uh, opponents tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you want to do uh, one on ones, uh, the guys are all here.